Hi and welcome. The patch which I want to show you this time is a typical sync sound. But other than normal sync sounds, I want to achieve this effect only with the wavetables in the blow field. And this patch is maybe even easier than you might think. So let's start with the programming. The wavetable we are looking for is 37. So let's go to oscillator 1 and choose wavetable 37. As you can see, the name of the wavetable is already pulse sync. So you have some typical sync sound wavetables like pulse sync and saw sync. We can slightly detune uh, this oscillator so that in combination with the second oscillator we get a brighter sound. And the level is a bit decreased because we are going to use um, the filter distortion and this will increase the level again. And to make it, to keep it under control we can decrease the oscillators and the octave is 4. The pulse width can be set to 0 and the brilliance to maximum. So this way you get this very harsh and, and dirty sync sound. You can already hear a lot of artifacts. Okay, and let's apply similar settings to oscillator 2. Again, I'm using wavetable 37. But this time we are going to turn the octave all the way down to 32. So this way we, we get this, this growling sound. Again, a bit of detune, this time a bit up and decreasing the level again. And here we can also put the pulse width down. Later we're going to modulate the pulse width parameters of both, both oscillators with the modulation wheel. But before we do that, let's have a look on unisono. Or for instance, uh, we can put this into monophonic mode because it's a typical lead sound. We don't need polyphony in this case. And then we can apply unisono, which um, duplicates voices in this case with even more detune. And the glide parameter is quite nice on such lead sounds. In our patch, filter 1 has only the job to add some distortion. Let's choose tube and add some drive of 20. So a little bit of distortion, not too much just to add more harshness and a, a bit of distorted sound. But you still need to recognize the notes and the pitch. And filter 2 is in serial mode with filter 1. And filter 2 is a high pass type, which is maybe surprising. Let's choose high pass 12 and a cutoff of 55. And key track. Yeah. 
So why should we add high pass to the sound? Well, as you may heard, um, the low frequencies are very chaotic in this patch. And to gain more control over the total pitch and to reduce this chaos in the low frequencies, we can filter them out completely. And this gives you also the opportunity to get more space in your track, which you record later with this sound. In the next step, I'm increasing the attack level to five to get a slightly softer entry into every note without a click sound. And we can change the LFO too and prepare it for some modulation. Change it to square wave and increasing the speed to maximum with a key track of maximum. We're going to use LFO2 just in the next step when we change the settings for the modulation matrix. And here we go. First, we can um, leave LFO1 um, as a modulation source for pitch of the first oscillator, but we are going to apply the second modulation slot with aftertouch on modulation slot one, which means that the aftertouch is modulating um, actually the first modulation slot. We can choose a amount of 15, just like a vibrato, and that's the result. Here we get a very odd vibrato because we are only modulating the pitch of oscillator 1 and the pitch of oscillator 2 gets no vibrato so that we get this very harsh vibrato type. And now let's have a look on LFO2. In the next two modulation slots we can use LFO2 as a modulation slot, um, source for the level of oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. We can for instance reduce the level with an amount of 15 for oscillator 1 and increase the level of oscillator 2 by 15. So we are constantly changing the pitches of both, both oscillators, but with, with a very small amount. And that's, that adds even more digital artifacts. And as the last modulations, we are applying the modulation wheel as a modulation source for the pulse width parameter, which is of course the wavetable selection. And by doing this, we can achieve control over the intensity of the sync sound all the way up to maximum amount. And this is extremely nice because you can use the modulation wheel as um, as a control to um, to control the intensity of the sync sound um, accordingly to what you're playing. By using aftertouch and the mod wheel, we get an extremely playable sync sound. 
And now let's finish the sound with by adding um, the flanger to effect slot 1 and some delay to effect slot 2. So let's go to effect slot 1. I'm choosing flanger. I'm adding the sound of the flanger by 40. And reducing the speed to 7, increasing the depth to 90, and of course decreasing again the feedback because it's way too high. And effect 2, as I said, is the normal delay effect. Also with a mix of 40. Length to 20. Spread to minus 15. And cut off to 50. So effect slot 2 has a delay, which is more like an early reflection of a reverb. And this gives us heavy late 70s, early 80s vibe like New Romantics and um, early Britpop. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, leave a comment, make a like, subscribe to my channel to watch even more Blowfield videos. Consider joining as a member to my channel. There you can get access to even more videos. You get access to the Blowfield modulation simulator software which I wrote and some of the patches which I created for this machine. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.